Similarly to the Washington Wizards, the Rockets just knocked the draft out of the fucking park. And before we get into why and how, make sure to like and subscribe because we are almost at a thousand subscribers and that would mean monetization for me and that would really help. Anyways, they selected Reed Shepard at number three overall. And Reed Shepard, on my big board, was the third overall pick. He is a player that really fits the Rockets roster because he fits in really well next to their already existing young core. He fits really well next to specifically Amen Thompson because he is someone who can play on or off ball, is able to free up a little you know, operating room for Amen because they need spacing around Amen because uh, good things as I can say about him because I really, really think he's going to be you know, a, an all-star minimum moving forward. He needs shooting around. He is a awful, awful, awful shooter. So you get a guy in who is probably the best shooter in the draft, him or Jared McCain. He shot 52% from beyond the arc in college, a insane percentage. He shot, I believe, over 50% on catch and shoots. He shot well on pull-ups. He was really efficient from everything. He also has good assist numbers. He has good rebounding numbers for his size. He average two and a half steals a game and he has very active he is someone who the rockets picked knowing that they were going to build around the court that they already have and that's a great because even if you move on from a couple of pieces maybe Jalen green doesn't work out for you you know you still have jane goon who is a all-star all nba future sort of guy he is averaged 21 9 5 with two stocks on 57 or sorry 54 30 70 splits so like not the most efficient right but like that was him in his year 21 season he's going to be 21 at the start of the next season and he's averaging those numbers in like his 30 he's going to be great he's going to be like sabonis Nervin. Then you look at Jabari Smith. Jabari Smith is a great role player. You know, I don't see star upside for him, but he's a very good 3 and D forward who is a good rebounder. He doesn't have much shot creation, but you know, he is a floor spacer. He is a good defender. You have Tari Eason, who didn't play much, but is when he does play, is really good. You have a lot of these guys. Cam Whitmore, somehow fell to 20 last how did the league let that happen? He's a great scorer. He's, you know, certified, made. He's ever going to be a playmaker because that man is a worse playmaker than Cam Thomas, but he's good. He's damn good. You know, you have a lot of these guys and they're getting, they have vets in like Fred Van Vliet, like Dylan Brooks, that like Jeff Green, that can build a, a good locker room culture that can help propel these guys forward to potentially being a, a playing team or even higher this next season. I would anticipate them being around that nine to 10 spot. They almost got there this year and then they kind of fell off towards the end of the season in the last like six or so games to finish around 500. They went on like an 11 game winning streak before that. They went on an insane run to really make the Warriors sweat. And it wouldn't have surprised me if they had managed to, you know, swipe that last playing spot away from them. And the Warriors are getting worse. So with you guys getting better, there's a solid, solid shot that when it's all said and done, the Rockets are in the play-in. I, I think that's a reasonable expectation because if you look at their projected starting lineup, you know, let's say it's it's Fred Van Vliet still because I don't think you pay a guy 40 mil to come off. The let's say it, it's Fred Van Vliet, Reed Shepard, or no, probably Fred Van Vliet, Amen Thompson, Barry Smith, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr., Alfred, or Jalen Green. Uh, I, I anticipate Jalen Green being moved at some point. I could be completely wrong here. But they were offering him out from Mikel Bridges at the trade deadline, and that was before his, you know, really good month out of March. But also, that's just one month over an expanded time frame. And I don't know if the Rockets want to keep investing in him. If they do, he's probably the starting two guard. But eventually, the starting lineup in your head would probably look like Amen Thompson, Reed Shepard, Jabari Smith, Tari Eason, Shengun, or Whitmore, Smith, Shengun, something to that effect, right? And that's a really damn good starting five. And I don't think that'll happen by the end of this season. I'm saying that's like the future, future, you know, lineup that you're probably hoping for. And I think that that works. I think that is a lineup with a good amount of synergy to it, with a good amount of togetherness that works as a, as a unit. And then you also have depth still. Like, I didn't mention Cam Whitmore in many of those. If Tar Easton is coming off the bench, that's really fucking good. You have guys who will be either good depth pieces or good starting pieces. You have more than five of them. And you also have more picks coming up. The Rockets are setting themselves up to be in a great position moving forward. And I think next season, the expectation for Reed can be to 
help that. Come in, play 20 minutes a game. Shoot above 40%. I don't expect him to shoot the 52 he did in college, but if he shoots, you know, a 42, 43 on decent volume, that's still very, very good, especially for a rookie. Be a passer, be a scorer, a little bit. You know, don't you don't need to go crazy, but average eight to 10 points a game, three to four assists, play good defense, be at least passable on that end, but Reed was a good defender in college, and I expect that trend to continue. And then play well with the guys we already have. Play well with Ahmed Thompson. Play well with Cam Whitmore. Play well with Jabari Smith. Set the table for him. Play finish for him. You have a great pathway, if you are the Rockets, to a future. And I think the Reed Shepard pick knocks it out of the park. And that's kind of my thoughts on the Rockets. Now, they haven't made any huge, you know, sweeping changes in free agency. I don't think they've even made a signing. They have a lot of flexibility moving forward, and I'm excited to see where they go. Not many teams have this much young talent on the roster, and even in a stacked Western Conference, with most of your players being under like 24, they'll be able to make a splash. I really do. I think they'll win 47 games next season. I think 47 games is a reasonable expectation. I think it's shooting a little above where the line will be at Vegas, you know? I think the over-under will probably be a little lower than that. If it's not, I mean, 47 wins seems pretty reasonable to me because you have a great group of role players. You have a great group of young guys. Someone's bound to take a leap. I expect Amon Thompson to be great next season. He already averaged 10, 6, and 3 with like two steals in 22 minutes a game his rookie season. I expect that to look like 14 to 15, 8 and 5 with like two and a half stocks. I don't think people realize how fucking good he is. Because like, yeah, people will hype him up as, oh, he's a great defensive player, you know, he, he really locks in on that end. He's a fun playmaker. He's a good slasher. No, he is electric. He is going to be great. He is patent made to be a great player. I think the same thing about Asar Thompson, by the way. Both of them are, are excellent, and despite the jump shot issues, I think they'll be good. I don't think either of them learn how to really shoot, but if they do, whew, watch out, because that would be scary. For so, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Rockets. Thank you guys for, for watching. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, comment. Tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why I'm right. Uh, have a great rest of your day. See ya.